the 31-year-old Brazilian Hakun Diaz taking on the 26-year-old Georgian Levon Makishvili. Both men five foot eight inches tall. Hakun Diaz has a half inch reach advantage. All right, to get us going now with the official introductions, here is Bruce Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live! From Hollywood, Florida, for UFC Fight Night, Machida versus Romero. And now, this fight is three rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record. Ten wins, one loss. He stands five feet eight inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Oceanside, New York, Levon the Hornet, Makashuli. And now we interrupt his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record. 22 wins, three losses, one draw. He stands five feet eight inches tall, weighing in at 145 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Acre Diaz. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, John McCarthy. Best seat in the house belongs to that man, Big John McCarthy. The beautiful Chrissy Blair to get us going for round one of a possible three. Levon Makashvili taking on the veteran Hakran Diaz right, to going, kick off ready. the main card. Capacity crowd on hand here in Hollywood, Florida. Hakran Diaz wearing the trunks with green. Levon Makashvili in the white. Twenty seventh professional fight for Hakran Diaz tonight. He's won twenty two of them, making his first appearance of twenty fifteen after a dominating win over Darren Elkins last December in Brazil. Inside leg kick there for Makashvili. Stepping in for Chaz Skelly on short notice here tonight is Makashvili. Diaz with authority lands that lead leg. Nice counter right by Makashvili. Akron Diaz considered one of the better wrestlers over at Nobu Niao. But one thing he said is that he needs to be more aggressive. One thing he's learned from his last few fights, sometimes he waits to get his rhythm a little bit too much. Realizes the importance of getting a good start in his fights. Join the UFC in supporting team Intrepid Fallen Heroes in their race across America, raising awareness and charitable contributions for the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund in support of our wounded military heroes. Learn more at IntrepidHeroesRace.com. Diaz trying to work the body of Makashvili. Inside leg kick is there for Makashvili. Two minutes have expired off the round one clock here. Diaz has dealt with some injuries, made his UFC debut in 2012, competed just once in 2013, twice last year against Ricardo Lamas and Darren Elkins. Marcus Billy pressing forward now with the left. Marcus Billy starting to move forward, but hasn't quite found his range. Diaz really hasn't found his range either. There's a takedown attempt there for Marcus Fury. Good early sign for Diaz to remain upright. Marcus Fury landed seven takedowns in his UFC debut in May against Mark Adiba. These no going out fighters can be very difficult to take down up against the cage. Don't grab it. Diaz possibly trying to set up a takedown of his own here. Able to get off the fence now. Nice right hand there from Marcus Fields. Absolutely, he has certainly been the more aggressive party in the early going. Hawker Diaz cannot afford a slow start, and he's able to break that guard of Marcus Fields with the jab. That's been the best weapon for Levon thus far. Gets that left foot off the canvas awfully quickly. Those feints of Makashvili really are working on Diaz. Seeing him flinch, 
and move every time Marcus Billy attempts. Look at it, here's the wrestling skills of Hakan Diaz. And Marcus Billy is an outstanding defensive wrestler, so nicely done by Hakan Diaz to land his first takedown attempt to the fight. Well, it was well timed here to end the round. Now Diaz needs to get busy with his grounded pound. And you do see strategically from a lot of fighters going for that takedown late in the round, potentially to try to sway the judges and score points. The Fram Cam is sponsored by Fram Oil Change, done right as we go into the red corner of Hawker Diaz. Come on, breathe. Let's breathe. There we go, breathe. You're very well now. You've you're just got a corner more. You have to hit his body more. He's go going backwards. Keep on going. Keep on completing your, your, your throws. He's, he's going backwards and he's not finding space. And he's feeling your, your strikes. Come on, try the upper two. Because... I know Ken Flo speaks six languages. I'm not sure if that is one of them. <laughs> it's not, unfortunately. Well, the most anticipated fight of the year now, just two weeks away. Jose Aldo putting the UFC featherweight title on the line against the inimitable Conor McGregor. A heated showdown you just can't afford to miss. It's only on pay-per-view July 11th from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. The words give way to the action and the biggest fight of 2015. Conor McGregor will join us in a bit from Las Vegas. Meantime, Jose Aldo's teammate, Hakan Diaz, in action here against Levon Makashu. Nice takedown there from Makashu. He timed it beautifully off of the leg kick of Diaz. Now Diaz looking for that Kimura. Let's see if he can turn it into a sweep or submission here. Let's see if he can slide that foot in. Oh, Makashu might be in trouble. Trying to separate, trying to push that hip away where you can get pressure either on the shoulder or go belly down on an arm lock. Let's see if Hakan Diaz can separate. He's starting to push on that hip. He's in the right position now. Done for the Russian arm bar. He's gone belly down here. Now takes the back. Beautiful reversal here from Hakan Diaz. Marcus Vili trying to shake him off. He does. Nice poise by the 26 year old Marcus Vili. Against the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, Hakan Diaz. Beautiful grappling exchanges there from both men. Let's see if Diaz turns this into a triangle here. He can. Marcus Feely with a big mistake here. Hakan Diaz starting to tight, tighten up that triangle. Marcus Feely might be in big trouble here. His only escape is probably going to be off of a slam. Diaz needs to tighten up on the inside, not grab the foot. He needs to tighten up inside and grab the shin. He's got plenty of time to start to tighten this up. Now, Diaz, he needs to push that right arm of Makashvili across his body. And there's the slam from Makashvili. And it's enough to pop him out. So, Hakan Diaz, in pursuit of his first submission win in the UFC, has eight for his career. It, it was an error from Hakan Diaz. He wasn't holding on to Shin. I don't know why guys like to grab their foot. It gives too much space. But it's exactly what Makashvili wanted. Let's see if Hakan Diaz can get up, use the cage to try to cage walk here. Now he's attacking the arm of Marcus Vili. Too loose. And it seems like Marcus Vili more than willing and, and confident to play around inside of Hakan Diaz's guard. Well, this is his style, John. He loves to grind these wins. Not the most exciting style here, but effective. Now look at this, Hakan Diaz puts Marcus Vili on his back. There are not that many featherweights that can do that to lay by Marcus Vili. Second takedown of the fight unofficially for Diaz. And it comes with just under two minutes to go in our middle round. That's why the fighters at Nobu now speak so highly of the wrestling skills, especially the offensive wrestling skills of Hakan Diaz. In the corner of Hakan Diaz telling him they want him against the cage. Yelling at him for having his back up against the cage. They don't like it at all. 
Oh, nice counter there to that outside trip from Makashvili. Left hand was able to land for Makashvili there. Under a minute now to go in round two. Let's see if Diaz tries to secure a late takedown as he did in round one. Oh, beautiful level change there from Diaz. See if he can lock his hands and finish this. This may be enough to maybe steal the round. Nice takedown there from Diaz. Kevin Makashvili all sorts of trouble with the wrestling game. This is not enough offense for Diaz. Diaz is doing a lot of the things right. He's in position to strike. He's in position to utilize his ground and pound, but just isn't able to get things going. Not enough here against Makashvili to really make a strong impression here in the round. Right. You're good. He's, he's gonna come at you like a crazy man now. He's dead. You're a lot better than he is. You got a lot more wrestling. Yeah, the positions are working. Now I want you to put him down again. Hold him on, let him, and then take him down again. Yeah, I mean, this time you're gonna catch him. Every time he's pulling his knee up, push him away and take him down. You're, you're fine. Five, five more minutes to finish this fight. You've done you won two rounds well. Well, Hakran Diaz had the ability to submit Makashvili with a tight triangle, but he just tightened it up in the wrong way. He's in this position. Tightened from the outside. First, it seemed like he was unsure when to go outside, grab the outside of the foot, and that just wasn't enough. The Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, Kenny Florian, taking you through the action on the ground. And you know, Diaz has landed three takedowns in the fight. Actually, did more with the Makish Villa takedown than he did with his own. Breaking the action here due to a groin strike. Get over there. There it is. Clean strike to the groin. <laughs> And when John McCarthy's in there, dude, you better get to your neutral corner, man. <laughs> McCarthy means business. As many of you know, the fighter will have five minutes with which to recover if needed. There they go. Right, fight! No intent there. We are back underway. Marcus Billy in the white. Diaz in the green and black with his back now up against the fence. Well, every time Diaz has shot, the takedown has materialized. And if you're going to take down one of the Nobu now fighters, it better be in the center of the octagon. These guys use the cage so well. There was a time where being up against the cage was a big time disadvantage when you were facing a wrestler. Now they've turned into an advantage. It's very difficult to take them down with that split stance up against the cage. Hakan Diaz starting to take damage with these combinations. Yeah, Marcus Billy. Right, and at least on the feet, it's Marcus Billy right. consistently applying no pressure. Well, I think we're seeing a little bit of paralysis through analysis from Hakan Diaz. He's in the right position. He's got the technique. He's got the speed and power. I think he's overanalyzing a little bit. We we'll see a lot of guys who are awesome in the gym and not so great in the fight because of that same kind of mentality. They're thinking about it a little bit yeah. too much, not letting their techniques flow out there. You wonder if he had just a little bit more reckless abandon if he could showcase how special a fighter many people know him to be. And he's not doing poorly in this fight. He may very sure. well be winning the fight. He's just not showing full commitment on his techniques. It's not like he's not capable. He's an excellent fighter. And just needs to commit a little bit more and have a little bit more faith in himself. Three minutes now to go in our third and final round. Crowd getting a little bit antsy, but this is a lot of what has made Levan Mokers really successful. Grinding away. All right, the referee not seeing enough action there. We go back to the center of the octagon now. Been a good round for Michael Feely. Been a battle for those takedowns. This third round really has slowed down a lot. Less 
than two minutes now to go in the fight. Makashvili able to take Diaz's back, albeit briefly. Nice hand fighting there from Hakran Diaz. He tries to get that double leg. Trying to lock his hands around the legs of Makashvili. That underhook prevented that takedown. Nice defensive wrestling there from Makashvili. He prides himself on that defensive wrestling. It is held up tonight largely. This time, it seems like he's been able to lock his hands. They turned this into a takedown. And Diaz, you know, overall landing at a pretty decent clip, 59%. Just has not been given a lot of room with which to operate by the Georgian Makashvili. Hopper Diaz, very tired. He has opportunity to lock his hands and finish the takedown. Makashvili able to get that left underhook. He creates some space there. Not a great fight here in this third round. Well, it's been right around this time in rounds one and two that Diaz has been able to ground Makashvili. Levon holding up pretty well here. Uh, Makashvili with a beautiful counter here. Diaz getting a little bit careless there, looking to his corner for advice. Nice finish there from Makashvili. He lands in the half guard of Hawkwind Diaz. Elbow there from Makashvili. Good place for him to end the third and final round. Hawkwind Diaz and Levon Makashvili go the distance. Who won? Who gets the official decision as we continue live with UFC Fight Night? Stay with us. There's a shot of Miami, Florida, just south of here as we come to you from Hollywood tonight for Fox Sports 1 UFC Fight Night. So a crowd on hand here in Hollywood. We go inside the octagon where the venerable Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The judges score the contest. 29-28, Makashvili. 29-28, Diaz. And 29-28 for the winner by split decision, Hakra Diaz. I'm here with your winner. Congratulations, Hakran Diaz. Grueling fight tonight against a very talented guy in Levon Makashvili. Overall assessment of your performance. Parabéns, grande vitória. A luta muito dura contra o seu oponente. O que você achou? É, eu peço desculpa ao público, mas eu acabei machucando meu pé. Eu acho que eu, de repente tem, acho que eu quebrei. Mas isso também não é desculpa pela luta que eu fiz. Ele é um cara bastante duro, né? O de Wesley faz a luta bastante agarrada. Então não quis arriscar. Eu tô querendo vir. Com essas vitórias consecutivas aí, Deus quiser, vou melhorar mais pra frente aí. Pode ter certeza. I'd like to apologize to my fans. It was a very tough fight. It was more of a grappling fight. I needed this win. Next time I'm going to come on a lot better. É, quero agradecer. Mandou um alô lá pra minha comunidade de Santo Amaro, pra minha filha e pra minha, pra minha, pra minha esposa. Yeah, I'd like to uh, thank the community of Santo Amaro, my daughter and my wife. It goes into the book, says a win. Enjoy it, ladies and gentlemen. Your winner is Hakran Diaz. A close, tough fight there between Makashvili and Diaz. Diaz getting it done. Had some early success with his wrestling. Now limping out of the cage there. You can see, must have been one of those leg kicks early in the fight.
All right, to move the fight is sponsored by Metro PCS, where you can get unlimited data, talk, and text on the nationwide T-Mobile network for $30 period. Here's a nice body lock takedown there for Diaz. Almost locking in this triangle. Very close to securing that choke. Another nice takedown from the body lock from Hakran Diaz. Showing off those wrestling skills, and it seemed like he was planning on striking with Makashvili, but maybe that foot injury switched his plan. Yeah, got outstruck, but ultimately the takedowns late in round one and two likely won him the fight. What do you think will be the best move of the night? Tweet, let us know, at hashtag Metro Move, and tune into Fox Sports Live after UFC Fight Night for the winning move. Well, coming up on July 15th, the Wednesday night affair in San Diego, that man, Todd Duffy, in the main event against the former two-time heavyweight champion, Frank Mir. Also in the building tonight, the star of the Miami Heat. They don't come much more beloved around these parts than Udonis Haslam. Octagon side here for UFC Fight Night tonight. All right, coming up next, it'll be the UFC debut of French-Canadian Steve Bossy, the former hockey goon to face Brazilian striker Tiago Mahetta Santo 